first installation of 100, 1,000 is actually going in this weekend, okay? Um, we're going to employ on Saturday and Sunday somewhere around 2,000 volunteers to haul through a human chain, person to person, 23,000 bags of oyster shells. Um, we're also employing uh, uh, members of the East Asian community there in Mobile Bay, uh, a community that's been very underrepresented, very disenfranchised, disproportionately, I would say, affected by the oil spill and, and Katrina. Um, it's going to be a messy, cold day, but I'm sure very rewarding uh, as we restore a, a reef to what is now a flat, um, a flat area. But I want you all to understand, make no mistake, um, 101,000 is coming about because of grit and determination. Um, it's, it's basically being cobbled together by uh, several uh, public and private funding sources. Less than one quarter of a mile of reef is going to be built. It's costing $70,000 to build. Um, where is the money going to come from to build the remaining three quarters of a mile or the remaining 99 miles there in Alabama, for that matter? We have no idea. Um, 100, 1,000, like so many projects across the Gulf, and again, we have dozens of them um, where we've proven that restoration works, is, is literally a diamond in the rough. You know, we're restoring thousands of acres of seagrass in Mississippi Sound. In Texas, we're Cindy, trying to... Cindy, can we, we, we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm almost done. My okay. point is that there are many, many projects like this one that just need uh, the will, the political will of this nation and public funding to get them going. Okay, thank you. And if you. you have nothing to do, to have nothing to come do. help us. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me move down the, the, uh, the row here and uh, get to our next speaker. Dr. Walker, would you like to you have thank an you. opening uh, statement? Um, Cindy is, is absolutely correct, and, and other folks earlier today have, have said this too. The Gulf is a pretty special place um, with a gross domestic product of over $2.2 trillion. The Gulf supports 20 million jobs, produces 27% of, 27 of the nature's crude oil, houses seven of the nature's 10 ports, produces 1.2 billion pounds of seafood a year, and provides 50% of the nation's wetlands. So yes, it's, a, it's something that we need to protect, and we haven't done a very good job of doing that over the last couple of decades. On April 20th, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded and sank. 11 people died. 4.9 million barrels of oil, roughly, were released into the Gulf until the well was capped on July the 15th. Oil reached the shores of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Um, all of the states, all of the effective states are now moving forward with, with plans for the future. And this, is, this, this section is visions for the future. Our vision has to be beyond the oil spill. As, as Chip Grote pointed out in, the, in his talk this afternoon, you know, if all we accomplish in 10 years is to get back to where we were before the spill, we will have failed. You know, this gives us an opportunity as did the hurricanes of 2005 to collectively look forward 15 to 20 years into the future and paint a picture of what we want collectively our Gulf region to look like and function like at that point in time. And, and to determine what are the things that we need to do today and tomorrow and next week and next month and next year so that those people who are around 20 years from now can look back and say, you know, those old guys back there, they did a pretty good job in those old days. Um, and as, as David Jaskowitz pointed out earlier, um, we're lucky in the Gulf. We, we've been being told for years by smart people like the Pew Commission, Ocean Commission, that we needed to, to, do, to manage our large water bodies differently. We didn't need to keep doing this on a state-by-state -state basis. We needed to pull together into regional partnerships to look at our Gulf region, our regions, as just that, as regions. And the Gulf governors in 2004, under the leadership of Jeb Bush in Florida, were smart enough to do just that. They pulled together an agreement with their, all the governors in the, in the region to form the Gulf of Mexico Alliance. It's a state-led, federally supported partnership dedicated to working together to ensure the environmental and econ economic stability of the Gulf region. And because of this partnership, the Gulf region is better equipped to handle regional disasters such as hurricanes and this oil spill. Because of this partnership, the Gulf region 
prior to the Deepwater Horizon accident had in place a plan, multiple plans actually, to restore and renew the region following Hurricane, Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Uh, and this plan will serve us well as we strive to recover and restore after the oil spill. Three Gulf states, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, convened commissions to provide visions for moving forward after the spill. These groups were comprised of business leaders, elected officials, academicians, and citizens. And, th and they considered all of the state and federal plans currently out there. The Gulf of Mexico Alliance Action Plan, the Mississippi Coastal Improvement Plan, the Louisiana Coastal Protection and Restoration Act, the Sea Grant Plan for the Gulf, and others. And they tailored a plan that would, one, provide for the needs of their state, and two, produce a healthier, more resilient, sustainable Gulf region. Um, funding for implementation of these plans will come from a variety of sources. Uh, the Oil Pollution Act, the narrative process was described in the last panel. Um, the Gulf Coast Re Ecosystem Restoration Task Force that's, that's uh, funded or sponsored by EPA that, that was talked about in the last session. Clean, Clean Water Act penalties, Mississippi and Louisiana coastal improvement programs that the Army, Co Army Corps of Engineers are working with those states to produce. Um, Gulf Coast restoration effort funds under Navy Secretary Ray Mabus. Uh, NOAA and EPA annual funding to GOMA and the Gulf states. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative that has been mentioned a couple of times, the $500 million from BP. Gulf of Mexico Environmental uh, uh, Economic Envir Economic Securities Act, GOMESA, uh, which is a DOI program, a, continu a continuation of sorts of the CAP program that's provided revenues from oil and gas activities back to the, to the oil producing states and, and others. So the Gulf states impacted by the oil spill because of their interaction through the Gulf of Mexico Alliance are well positioned to recover and restore their state and region as a whole far beyond the impacts of this oil spill. We are investing in restoration plans currently in place. Some of these are actually underway now. Others will commence as funding becomes available. Um, and as a region, we're confident that by working together, we will, we will be successful in recovering from this disaster with the result being a healthier and more sustainable Gulf of Mexico region. Thanks, Ira. Thank you very much. Uh, Don Bosch? Thanks, Ira. Um, I, I fell in love with the Gulf Coast as a young boy growing up there, and so much so I decided that this is, I wanted to make my profession studying the ocean. And so I was, uh, I've been extraordinarily gratified to be asked by the President to serve on the, on the Oil Spill Commission and to contribute uh, towards a vision about the future of this region. Uh, I think for those of you who've stuck around the whole day and have heard uh, Bob Graham and Bill Riley uh, speak about our work this morning, it's been great leadership that they've shown us uh, to address these issues. Uh, and and um, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll be able to implement many of our recommendations. Now, as Ira pointed out, I also work on climate change issues. And in point of fact, at the same time I'm doing the Oil Spill Commission work, I'm serving on another prestigious a committee of the National Academy called America's Climate Choices. So as I watch this uh, tragedy unfold, uh, the, the deep irony. Now here we are with this disaster because we've been trying to get this fossil fuel out of the earth as fast as possible from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and for a variety of reasons we all know that we need, need these resources and so on, but what the consequence is, is that as we began to respond to this oil spill and worry about protecting our shorelines and marshes and barrier islands, looked at in the big picture, we were actually trying to protect things that may well be underwater in 20 years. If we don't also deal with our addiction to oil and the need to get off of uh, fossil fuels and make this transition. Uh, Senator Graham talked about this this morning and we were told by the President when he formed us, our job is not to determine, uh, recommend national energy policy, but obviously I think what we, people of the Gulf Coast need to realize that they are the mo among the most vulnerable parts of, the, of our country with respect to climate change. 
And if anything, my harsh message, my tough left message is that as we deal with this, our future and the restoration of there, we need to get real. Uh, we, we need to take seriously this risk. We need to be, the Gulf Coast area should be leaders in this transition uh, to a renewable energy future because they have the most at stake. The harsh reality of it is, though, is that in most of those Gulf states, you really can't talk about this. It's not part of the political rhetoric right now. We, that has to change. Uh, now, having said that, another a bit of irony that I, I as I watch the, the tragedy unfold and all of the experts on TV talk about the risks and the problems, and, and we heard about this deep water plume that was taking place, and everyone was worrying about whether it was going to cause a dead zone in the Gulf because of the degradation of that oil. Well, guess what, folks? There already is a dead zone in the Gulf. It's very massive. It occurs every year. It's got enormous effects, and, and it causes, uh, uh, you know, lots of problems that we need to address. How do we deal with that in the context of this future of the Gulf Coast? Uh, the day after the well was capped with the capping stack for good, the Times-Picayune, the New Orleans newspaper, said, maybe it's time that the federal government also capped the nitrogen coming down the river because it's so vitally important, not only in terms of eliminating the, uh, eliminating the dead zone, but it limits the options we have to deal with this river water to deal with the problems General Walsh is going to talk about, about restoring the delta. Because we have polluted hot water, hot in terms of stimulating a lot of production, that, that could have the side effects of causing lots of problems while we do that. So we need to get real about these issues, think of them in a holistic way as we move forward. You know, our commission was only seven individuals, and so we actually had to work on all aspects of our work. I Ask me, I like to give a lecture on uh, converting float valves. I, I think I can do that at the, Not at today, the present though. time. <laughs> but, but, but one of the things I, of course, was focused on, and I hope we can talk some more about this, is, is the science aspects of this. Uh, the, we need to bo bolster the science, um, not only in terms of understanding this oil spill, but you know, there's an activity, a scientific activity that takes place in advance of this to determine the planning, the sensitivities, and if, and if it wasn't so obvious, it is true, that we've come up really short. We didn't understand the risks and vulnerabilities. We didn't invest in the right science. And I think Secretary Salazar has asked for additional funds to do that. We have a great opportunity. Our, our commission makes, makes some recommendations about how that should proceed in partnership with the other science agencies and with the academic research community. There are opportunities for putting in place an observing system, a modern high technology observing system. We have an enormous infrastructure of the oil and gas. It's the most economically active and, and vital part of our coast. We should have that in there. Right, let, let's get and we'll talk about restoration yeah. later We'll, we'll on talk about it. I want, I want to get just the opening statements done, and uh, <laughs> then we can go to dinner. Uh, <laughs> I go to General Walsh because he, uh, his, 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 uh, the Corps has come up a few times, and I'm, I'm very eager because you have incredible influence, I imagine, over what gets done there. I'm, or am I giving you too much credit? <laughs> too, too much credit, I read. Well, first, uh, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak here today. And, uh, my presentation is about 40 minutes, but Ira said I have five. So I'm going to uh, hit my watch, and at the end of five minutes, I'll stop wherever, uh, wherever I'm at. I've been uh, one of your uh, soldiers for the last uh, 33 years. This is my third uh, Corps of Engineer division. Uh, that I've had the, uh, the pleasure to, uh, to command. And the Mississippi Valley Division, as Ira just mentioned, covers down from, uh, from, Alaska, uh, fr from Alaska, from Canada, on down to the, uh, to the Gulf, of, uh, Gulf of Mexico. So it's, about, it's, and, it, it's, it's 370,000 square miles uh, from Minnesota down to, the, down to the Gulf. And I have six uh, districts, uh, Colonel District Commanders, that are, that are helping me uh, run, this, uh, run this division. But a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of history. In, in uh, prior to coming to this job, I was the uh, commander of the Gulf Region Division. I was General Petraeus's engineer in Iraq, and I was working the infrastructure there. The uh, uh, my boss, the chief engineer.